What's up guys, Josh here. Welcome back to part 3 of Bunny Hill Horror Bunny Boiler. We're gonna be going to the safe because um, Chain Wolf commented on my uh, the previous video saying that I actually got the safe code right. I just gotta do it a little bit slower and we're gonna try it again. So N A C L. Oh, it worked! <laughs> for some reason, I thought it kicked me out, and I was really confused for a second. You give the code due consideration and enter the chemical formula for salt. The safe opens, and you help yourself to a small vial of Tereaea, the antidote drug. This could certainly come in handy. Yes, yes, it could. So we got two and darts. Yes. So uh, for some reason, you go back to the safe, but find nothing else of interest. The sachet remains, but you doubt that undersalted food will pose any major problems for you tonight. That's fair. Let's let's ask about the Medugal. Medugal, did Leonard ask you? A very cheeky man, but I say yes. Is source of neurological fascination how correct adherence to serotonin receptors do alter cognitive perception, yes? That confused the fuck out of me. But we're just gonna I have no idea what I read, but we're continuing on. Yes, you say, wondering how a woman who sounds like she swallowed a dictionary can have so little grasp of basic sentence structure. Yes! <laughs> I'm wondering the same thing. Take it. I am Miss Rude. Would you try some also? Except be caution. There's famous rock and roll star who ingests Medugal. He now thinks he a glass of lemonade. <laughs> he converses but remarks like, be careful, you might spill me. <laughs> he knows not that lemonade can't talk is most perplexing. I mean, we probably shouldn't, but we're gonna try it anyways. I guess. Sure, I'll try some. Twas brillig and the slitty toes did gyre and gimbal in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the mom wraths out grab. Beware the jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that cratch. Beware the jub jub bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the man's own foe he sought, so rested he by the tum tum tree and stood a while in thought. He took his vorpal sword in hand, and as an uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with the eyes of flame came whiffing through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker snack. He left it dead, and with its head, he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O frab just day, kalu kale. He chortled in his joy. Come to my arms, my beamish Drugs are scary. Reality starts to seep back and you realize you're in the car park spinning and swaying. You fall to the ground and the strange images that seemed so clear fall away too. Let's have some more, or <laughs> fuck yeah. Alright, let's uh, <laughs> I guess we go back to the pub. You return to sit down with your friends after numerous pub quizzes. You are very familiar with the sight of Dave Downing droning on while Claire eavesdrops on other people's conversations. Occasionally turning back to nod or say, that's interesting. They seem happy enough, you consider. Everyone's still not at the bar. So we could give him the Medigal now. He appears list lists and showing pool balls around the table with some force. He looks at you expectantly. Um, I guess we give him the medigal. Oh, he gave us tips. Thanks, you're a star, he says as he grabs the pills and is about to swallow one, but manages to compose himself, taking several deep breaths. Okay, the quiz. First of all, everything Ozzy says is utter tripe. The point is to get his minions to accept his word as the truth. It's how cults work. And then he gives marks to whoever's in his good books. There are three other teams, pharmacy, finance, and security. Here, I'll write down I'll write this down for you. He looks around and finds some paper to write on. Pharmacy are in favor this week because they've finalized the zombie drug and antidote, so they'll get the right answers. The only way they'll be wrong is if finance and security agree on something different. Got that? Peeking at their answer sheets should be easy enough. Suppose I'd best go help old Ozzy out now. Okie dokie back. Uh, look around uh, back to lounge, I guess. What even do I have to do now? I guess just staff room, right? Tell me, says Ozzy. Why have you returned when you have no news to bring me, and have failed to perform your tasks? If you want to listen to my wise counsel, I will begin with this advice. 
Do your duty to your lord. That is how wisdom and happiness are acquired. Now go back to the dry cleaners. Wait, why? Did I forget something at the dry cleaners or something? What is... What? You re-enter the dry cleaners and almost jump at the sight of elf pertonic chair and red PVC boots and moving her hips as if in time to some internal rhythm. She smiles as she sees you. Thought daddy would send you my way. Your uniform was my idea. Oh yeah, I forgot that we still haven't, you know, we're supposed to be wearing a uniform or something more appropriate for the quiz for some reason. But yeah, uh, what are you doing here? This is my refuge, away from the castle and all of daddy's silly rules and nonsense about the past. Here. Oh, here I can be whoever I want to be. It's not often that I have a playmate, though. Whose clothes are you wearing? I often wonder. All those serfs out there with lives that I know nothing about. Maybe these belong to a singer or actress like Doris Day, and I'm performing to thousands of adoring fans across the world. Doris Day, you ask? Is that weird? I'd love to watch Marilyn Monroe films or listen to jazz, but Daddy thinks those are too decadent. Maybe a little decadence is can be exhilarating at times. I don't mean to bug you, I just want my uniform and I'm gonna go. A uniform? Of course you do. You can't be a gallant warlord in that tatty suit, can you? Elf bends over behind the counter giving you even more of an eyeful, okay, before emerging with some folded up green material. You hold out your arm, but she hesitates and then grins. First of all, she says, you'll have to get out of your clothes. Oh, okay, um, am I here to play games? Hand it over, please. Fine. Elf spits the word out and throws the clothing towards you with some force. There's a changing room there. Someone will clean your, your cheap and nasty suit, probably. Or I can just throw it in the bin where it belongs. You enter the cubicle and change into a green tunic. Checking the mirror, you receive confirmation that you look just as ridiculous as you feel. Don't you have some heroics to perform, she says, facing away from you with folded arms. I'm sorry, do you want Toriea? Or darts? Or I can give you the quiz tips. Pharmacy will get the right answers unless finance and security agree on something different. So maybe I have to talk to finance and security then. Back to the pub, I guess. Oh, wow. You return to the lounge to be greeted by a snort of laughter from Big Mad Rob. The room is filled up and it's harder to hear your friends over the noise. This is probably for the best. What the hell are you wearing? asks Dave. Aw, you look like a pixie, says Claire. Well, try this trick and help us win the quiz, says Dave. We've got our answer sheets. And we're just waiting for that mad old bloke. Are you ready? In a sec you'd say, trying to drown out the mockery. Ozzy wants to see me. Okay, so back to the staff room. Excellent! Oswald's voice is noticeably deeper and silkier. Like an actor who needs a costume to perform a role. He puts a hand on your shoulder. The warrior tunic is very suitable, because I have great plans for you and your friends. You are to fight for Mercia. For tradition, for the good of the people, and the kingdom. We're... You're gonna go with- No, what's wrong with you? Just see what happens. It is sad, but I expected this attitude from you, he says with a shake of the head. I'm afraid one must be realistic. You're not a scholar, scribe, or historian, and the glory of the battlefield awaits you. Don't be afraid. You will be imbibed but with friend drink. The Saxon warriors drink, resurrected in Mercia Co. Labs, so you will feel no pain. Only a victory at tonight's quiz will convince me that you have the talents of, for a different path. So there's actually like a few things that once you choose, you can't actually go back and play over, which is cool. Um, and then I just hope that I don't fuck up the story too much by doing so. Your friends look up in expectation. Are we good to go? asks Dave. Looks like says Claire, pointing to the opening staff room door. Wow, is that your boss? He looks impressive in an unhinged sort of way. What do we win anyways? asks Dave. Uh, you hesitate. I'll tell you later. You don't see Oswald at first, but the hush from the front stage quickly sweeps across the lounge like a pacifying wave until you hear the man's footsteps approach the mic and watch him pause to take in the room. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice is almost seductive. It is an honor to be in your fine company this evening. We enjoy these quizzes because we like to solve problems, yes? Right as Rosado shouts out Teza, this seems to irk Ozzy, but he proceeds. But there are some problems that even worldly knowledge cannot solve. This once proud land has been corrupted. Greedy politicians selling out to modern ideas. His voice is getting louder. Satellites spewing endless Yankee shit into our homes. Swarms from Umbongo land diluting our culture. Drugged up zombies shaming our city centers and giving lie to the promises of the modern world. When you feel he can't get any louder, he pauses and looks around the crowd. 
as the echoes of his speech fade. So, he asked calmly, what do we do? Yes, what do we do? Ozzy looks directly at you. Well, he says, I will enlighten you. On this very land there once stood a proud and noble country, a country where the ideals of chivalry, nobility, and reason triumphed, a country called Mercia. Ladies and gentlemen, by tomorrow, Mercia will be resurrected and I stand, by, I stand humbly before you as your new king. Our subjects have developed a shield to those drugs to the modern world depend on. I say, if they love decadence so much, then let's overwhelm them with drugs and rub their faces into their own sickness. When the modern world comes begging for an antidote, I will lay down my demands and they will find out it is an antidote to the modern world itself. Now let us begin the quiz. Alrighty. Billy Hell says Dave as Ozzy leaves the stage and the pub chatter renews. Claire had nothing to add. Dave looks like he's about to add something. I mean, bloody hell, really. He elaborates. Good job elaborating, man. I don't know if this is a good time to mention it, you say, but if we don't win, he's going to drug us up and make us zombies like that woman Rob shot. Your friends just nod despondently as if they expected nothing better. There's a drink-stained answer sheet in front of you, and three other teams are sat around. Okay. So if we start by visiting the pharmacy, no sooner do you stand than your friends take one of your shoulders each and drag you back down. No, says Dave, you're not running off to play Jessup again, not till we've come up with a plan at least. I... Oh. I did not mean to click on that, but okay. Guess who chose the team name and our answers, he says, rolling his eyes. Claire laughs, spitting out some of her drink. Her third drink you deduce from the empties. These are impossible, says Dave. I wanted to use my phone, says Claire, but some cow in a suit confiscated it. Do you have any ideas? The Clayton Tavern Quiz. Question 1. Upon which beast did Isel ride to found Mercia in 515 AD? Big fat cow. Which land army did the heroine Sayreth defeat despite having no arms? Narnia. Oh, that was question 3. Question 2. Which god slash goddess did Creoda take strength from after defeating the Northumbrian army at Bunny Hill? Claire Bear, the Almighty. That don't seem right. Let's visit the pharmacy. Guess not. Game... No. Le no. Lens tips. So, all well, the answers are just made up, asked Dave. This is outrageous. People can't just write anything. People just write anything all the time, counters Claire. Especially if they think they're a king. I know what to do. It's easy. We'll just go around the tables, get their answers, and pick the right ones. Finance. Uh, you find the finance team in Roche's conversation. Well, you find Tezza in Roche's conversation. The other team members look like they'd be happier in a war zone. Friends aside, they don't fancy joining you in the cold, leaving you to face Rob's leering alone. It looks like the little fairy's off to the forest. He seems like he's had a few drinks, but you still don't rate your chances of running off. Inside the dry cleaner in an office, looks like they're close for business, business, but there's light on the pharmacy. Run off. Fuck. <laughs> you die thinking that Rob's aim might have lost his sharpness. You run off into that little night. It hasn't. It hasn't. And to be honest, if you're going to desert your friends like that, I have no sympathy at all. I have another go. Let's go to the pharmacy, see what's up there. The pharmacy is deathly quiet. Despite their poor job of locking the front door, everything else seems shut away. Walking into the dispensary, you find the safe with its resident sachet of salt and a letter which has escaped the cleanup. The letter is an email chain which according to its timestamp was printed off a couple of hours ago. King Oswald Manius to Daisy Fluffington received just now. Good, your investigation has been exemplary. You may proceed how best you feel is appropriate. Daisy Fluffington to King Oswald Mandius sent 5.46 p.m. Sire, as always, I must kneel down before your brave and wise leadership in discovering a leak of information from within Mercia Co. My investigation into IP addresses have confirmed the cipher codes are being sent from the finance office above the dry cleaners, and I am sure of who the traitorous spy Blue Valkyrie is. Let me neutralize her on your say-so. Your loyal subject, Daisy Fluffington, B.A. E.C.D.L. Senior Secretary to His Lordship of Mercia, Lead Pharmaceutical Consulting Administrator. Okay, I don't really know what that helps us with, though. Let's go security, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> security team by the door consists of Big Mad Rob and all his friends. In other words, Big Mad Rob. Tankered in hand, he sways in his, on his stool and leers as you approach him. Oh, look, he says. It's Team Fairy. You just, are you wearing anything under that skirt? If you're not after, if you're answer, after my answers, you can forget it. Just look forward to being mindless zombies. Not anyone can tell the difference. He laughs at his excellent wit and takes another drink. Ask Dave for help? Hey, Rob, says Dave, do you like free money? Do you like getting knocked out with a bar stool? 
Only, they persist. If you help us, we'll make it worth your while. Will you? asks Rob. Don't think I haven't seen you with your dodgy Soviet banknotes. I'm ke keeping a closer eye on you than you think. Dave tries to show Rob the money, but backs away as Rob stands up and reaches for his gun. Just can't reason with some people, Dave tells you in a shaky voice. Claire, I guess? Claire goes to Dave and whispers in his ear, looking at you a couple of times, and Dave nods. You're getting very suspicious. She walks back to you, smiles at Rob, then suddenly lifts the hem of your tunic above your waist. Rob looks down at you open-mouthed and wide-eyed. Before you can react, you see Dave making an okay thumb and fourth finger gesture from behind Rob's shoulder. Okay. Claire, you son of a bitch. You now have team security's answers. Claire, you say as you walk back to your table, we need to have a serious talk about boundaries. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, finance. I guess we just ask if we could share answers. I'd be happy as a hippie if we could, says Teza. But the king won't like it. Uh huh. -huh. And my team are counting on me. He waves his arm to take in one woman looking at her watch and another tearing a cigarette paper into smaller and smaller pieces. And there are tough questions this week. Funny thing, I've lived in Clayton my whole life and I never knew there was once a battle on Bunny Hill. He winks and you wonder if there's something more shrewd about Tezza than meets the eye. Dave, I guess? You stand behind, beside Claire Bear, both in a state of curiosity as Dave whispers something into the man's ear. The man theatrically shrugs and strokes his chin whilst looking coy. There's a quick exchange of something shiny and Dave's turn, Dave turns back to you. Okay, he says we got their answers. Dave? asks Claire. Did you bribe him? I thought you had no money. Well, you know all that cash lying around after the barmaid left, he says. I don't want to know. This dude took the money from the fucking bar. Oh, poor, poor elf. Uh, so I guess we'll go to the pharmacy table. It's the only place we haven't gone to. Um, staff room, we can try, I guess. I normally announce the result on stage, says Ozzy, going through papers, but time doesn't permit on this occasion, and we don't want certain people getting upset and spoiling the atmosphere, do we? A cruel laugh in your ear makes you realize Daisy is standing right behind you. The door slams shut. So if you're confident with your answers, you may hand over your sheet. If not, I will permit you a few more minutes. Let's leave, because we definitely don't have it right. We'll go to the pharmacy table consists of Dr. Krova, Daisy, and a couple of unfamiliar faces. Nobody looks very happy, but Dr. Krova perks up as she sees you. Hello, my good friend, she says. The new research assistant. Come join us, yes? Izzy is less pleased to see you and bites into a lollipop. I guess we just ask for help. In sadness, you don't join us, but I help you because we are friends. Perhaps I am Mrs. Naughty, but we share answers. Dr. Krova, says Daisy. I strictly forbid you to. Shut up, Daisy, says Dr. Krova as you look at each other's answer sheets. Who is this god declare bear the almighty? I know not. You know, damn, Team Pharmacy's answers will try to avoid the laser glare of Daisy. Okay, so, sit back down. We gotta pick which is right on the quiz. So I'm assuming the plus is Pharmacy, this is Finance, and that is uh, Security. Pharmacy is right, unless Finance and Security agree. So, Pharmacy is right, unless Security and Finance agree, which they don't. Security and Finance agree here. Uh, this is pharmacy. Oh, wait, oh my god, I didn't realize it said right here. Plus, unless E and X. I think we're good. We're gonna we're gonna hand this bitch in. You feel Daisy grab your arms as Ozzy reads out your answers. He looks up at you with a raised eyebrow. My congratulations, he says. It appears that team quizzed in my... <sighs> he sighs. That your team has triumphed this week. By cheating! Daisy's grip tightens and you feel spittle against the back of your neck. That's a little gross. I don't want no COVID. You've always had a very direct approach, Miss Fluffington, says Ozzy. It is one of your strengths, and many problems can be solved with a hammer. Other problems, however, require a corkscrew. Yes, I know they were cheating, but we have a lack of creative thinkers in our ranks. He turns to you. You may now come with us. It doesn't sound like a request. We're gonna follow Mr. Oswald Mandius here in the next episode. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please like, comment down below, and subscribe for more content from this channel. I'm playing more games like this in the future. Glad to be playing this one right now. And other than that, I'll see you all in the next one. Josh out.